Hello and welcome my friends. I am back again with another very interesting session with you. I will be sharing with you a very interesting case, perhaps one of my best cases of alopecia. I will start off with the case details and I'll, then I will do a comparative metromedica about that. This is a case as I mentioned of alopecia and this was one of my patients. She was female, 21 years. She came to me with absolute hair loss. If you see in this picture, you will see the extent of the hair loss. It was quite extensive and complete at this very tender age. So obviously she was very depressed and frustrated considering she had been suffering with this and she obviously looked upon homeopathy as the last resort of help. She was a student. She is a student and her main complaint is alopecia which has been there since the last four years. So you can understand it has been there for quite a long period of time. And obviously she has been cons consulting us for that only. As you have seen in the picture, the alopecia has been quite extensive all over. Other symptoms which she had, there was sour mouth and heartburn. So that was associated factors with that sour mouth, heartburn and she had mentioned she was better by cold drinks. So that was an additive factor, worse from fasting, better from eating. She also had quite a lot of debility, weakness was quite prominent and as you have seen in the picture and as you see in the picture again that there is a lot of oily appearance, oily shiny appearance in the scalp. So the scalp she mentioned was quite oily and shiny which is quite important in the case as well. Now what is interesting about how the complaint started? She mentioned that she had an attack of fever every year in August and the fever used to last for one week. So since the last four years she has been having a recurrent fever in around August, September every year and the fever generally lasts for a week. And this alopecia had started gradually after an attack of fever four years back. So you understand this alopecia has started for the last four years. And it was an attack of fever from which the alopecia precipitated four years back. But every year she has been at having an attack of recurrent fever. Unfortunately, that has been undiagnosed because the fever stays a week and the thing that it goes away of its own. So that was one of the development of complaints that the alopecia NBWS never been well since an attack of fever four years ago but you understand the fever generally recurs every year around a particular time in the past history obviously this attack of recurrent fever is important she had a history of bleeding hemorrhoids in the past history which was treated homeopathically and that was gone. In the family history, father had died at a very young age due to colon cancer and there was bits and pieces of asthma in the family but the grandfather also had a history of prostatic cancer. So that was in the family as well, asthma with cancer. Now if you do a head to foot assessment, I generally do a head to foot assessment after I have gone through the present complaints. There was some degree of bad breath. If you consider miasmatics, bad breath is syphilitic. There was occasional gum bleeding. Gum bleeding is hemorrhage. Any hemorrhage my friends is tubercular. And there was a profuse leucoidal discharge which debilitates the patient. Excessive leucoidal discharge which debilitates. So that was about the head to foot assessment which was nothing very uncommon or peculiar. We went to the generals after that and in the generals she was generally constipated. Stool is generally one to two days interval, some degree of mucus 
urine had a little bit of offensive smell so bad smell with urine as well she sweats quite a lot mostly on the head and her menses are generally irregular so irregular periods at the age of 21 black clotted blood and the period generally stays seven days so again from the generality's point of view some degree of offensiveness profuse head sweats irregular menstrual bleeding which is sometimes black and clotted she's a hot person who likes egg who likes sour so egg and sour are topmost desires followed by sweet thirst is normal about two liters a day why i'm sharing with you the entire case history so that you understand the point and the reasoning of the prescriptions if you think of the emotional generals or mental generals quite irritable quite a lot of sadness considering two factors due to the hair loss and untimely death of the father so there's a quite a lot of disappointment and sadness she's quite fastidious and tidy and she has a certain degree of fear of reptiles snakes Fear of reptiles and snakes um, is one of the factors with her case as well. Now, if you look at the entire symptom picture, I've shared with you the entire symptom picture here. Now, if you try and understand this and why this case I have chosen to share with you, because it is a case where I failed at first and failure, as you understand, always a stepping stones to success. 15th of September, 2020. Fifteenth of September, so 15, 9, 2020, I started a case with fluoric acid 200C, single dose. Why? Fluoric acid, I will be sharing in a, in a separate section about the comparative metromedica for alopecia. Fluoric acid is one of your very celebrated remedies for alopecia. Alopecia, you understand here in this case, as you saw the picture, complete baldness syphilitic in a hot patient. Fluoric acid is a hot syphilitic with some degree of offensiveness, bad breath, offensive urine. So, syphilitic preponderance in a case, I chose miasmatically, fluoric acid 200C, 15th of September. She came back in a month's time, 13th of October. Absolutely no change with the alopecia. I generally always prescribe another potency before giving up on a remedy. I prescribed fluoric acid 1M or 1000. Again, unfortunately, she came back a month and a half later, 25th of November, 2020. There's absolutely no change at all. Now, I thought I have prescribed miasmatically. Perhaps I'm failing. I did not consider the entire symptom picture. I did not consider the etiology. 25th of November, I revisited the case again. I changed my prescription to typhoidinum. Two potencies. 200 followed by 1 m 200 c i was shared in the dispensing section 200 c safe for three days seven to ten days gap or two weeks gap 1 m another dose after that so 200 c safe for three days two weeks gap 1 m for three days why i chose typhoidinum it was a recurrent fever which was coming back every year and the recurrent fever was lasting one week with a slow rise of temperature Although the fever was undiagnosed, one of the commonest diagnoses in this part of the world is typhoid. And typhoid does have a tendency as a sequel to cause hair loss. So although I did not have a proper diagnosis, but I thought that it can be a history of recurrent typhoid fever which is coming back, which is resulting in the alopecia. So, I chose Typhoidinum 200 followed by 1M, considering the etiology of the hair loss. Just to clarify this part, in all other previous years, she hadn't gone for a diagnosis, 
But in 2020, considering it was the COVID year, she had gone for the diagnosis with COVID, with typhoid, with dengue fever, and it came out to be faintly positive for typhoid, although the other fevers were negative. So that was one of the clues I thought that typhoid can be one of the precipitating factors for developing this. She came back again on the 1st of February 2021. Thank my stars for coming back considering perhaps my reputation. But she did come back although the alopecia was standstill even after 4 to 5 months of treatment. Now I thought I am not giving importance to the factors of the alopecia. I did not give importance, I gave importance to the miasmatics initially, I gave importance to the causation the next time. But perhaps I need to prescribe a remedy which will be taking care of both the miasmatics and the causation. Consider the history of the recurrent fever. What is that? It is a factor where you are having a recurrent inflammatory illness which is coming back every year. So if you consider one, the history of recurrent fever. What is the history of recurrent fever? It is the uh, inflammatory illness. I will come to the points. So a history of inflammatory illness. And number two, the strong, strong family history of cancer. So a history of inflammatory illness and a strong family history of cancer. And these two factors go well hand in hand together for prescribing a deep acting remedy like arsenosin. And I prescribed in that case again considering the etiology. Carcinosin 200 followed by 1M. So if you see, I'm trying to cover the remedy in all the three planes. Number one, the etiology. Carcinosin has an etiology from a past history of inflammatory illnesses. It can be whooping cough, it can be pneumonia in the past, but for her case, it was an undiagnosed fever, which triggers the onset of alopecia. Number two, a strong family history of cancer. And number three, you have to consider the disappointment, the unhappiness of A, losing the hair, but B, untimely death of a father of for a teenager. So these factors led me to carcinosin prescription. And you have to understand where the failures were and why I succeeded. I failed because I chose just the miasmatics for fluoric acid. I failed because I just chose the etiology for typhoidinum. But with carcinosin, I considered her emotional state. I considered her past history. I considered her family history. And that's where I succeeded with carcinosin. If you look at this picture, you will see that how gradually over time, I have given three, two to three follow ups and how gradually over time the hair has started to regenerate, the hair has started to regrow. And it is one of the fantastic examples of how homeopathy can help in these cases. You see where I started off with the alopecia and the present state over the course of time. Why I chose two potencies? Two potencies my friends works best when given one after the another that has been mentioned by dm Forbista in his book tutorials on homeopathy so 200 c in a bottle of water sip for three days 14 days gap 1m again to sip for three days the first of february that was the prescription i repeated the 1m again in april 2021 carcinosin 1m because the the periods were irregular although the hair fall was getting gradually better and believe me I have not repeated since after carcinosin 1M. So this is a message to all young homeopaths, to all fellow homeopaths who are practicing, learn from your mistakes, where you failed, and that will always be the stepping stones to success. You can see the gradual transformation, how the hair has came back over time, and she is doing far, far better. I haven't repeated after the 1M in April, and she has been doing absolutely fine and the hair is coming back with every follow-up and that's one of the beauty of prescribing carcinosin if you have seen my previous video of carcinosin emotional state you'll understand how carcinosin's emotional state develops but i'd also like to share with you carcinosin's physical symptoms or how you can prescribe it from the physical essence point of view 
I shared with you how carcinosin helped in this young girl and I will be sharing with you a few interesting essence about the physical theme of carcinosin. If you consider as a mnemonic for carcinosin, cafe au lait appearance, cafe au lait is coffee in hot milk with lot of moles and blue sclerotics. That's important for carcinosin. A for carcinosin, you have alimentary apps upset in the past so some alimentary disorder in the past is important for carcinosin and it can be DAC diarrhea acidosis or constipation so a r reference always the family history the family history of cancer is obviously important, but you can have a family history of diabetes mellitus, tuberculosis and anemia, especially pernicious anemia. Again, my dear father has picked up this wonderful mnemonic and he learnt it from S.P. Day, who was one of the brainchilds of carcinosin because he learnt it from D.M. Forbister himself. CARC again characterized by prolonged history of AIUFF anticipation irritability. I've shared all of this in my first part of carcinosin. Irritability, unhappiness, fear and fright. So all these are very important causations for carcinosin's emotional picture to develop. I, I mentioned earlier on inflammatory illness in the past. Inflammatory illness in the past, as I mentioned the history of recurrent fever for her. And here it could be pneumonia or whooping cough. We come to N. N is for nocturnal aggravation, night aggravation. When thinking of complaints, aggravation. In carcinosin. O. Carcinosin is often aggravated at East Coast, especially with my American participants, and better in the South Coast. Even with the East Wind, they aggravate, and the South Winds, they feel better. S, sleep position of carcinosin is very important. Knee chest position, a knee elbow position. Like metarinum, like calcarea force, like tuberculinum, like a podium, all have knee elbow position or sleeps on back with hands on head, like pulsatilla. We come to I for carcinosin, insomnia. Remember, carcinosin can have insomnia for years, but without suffering. So, she may be sleeping for three hours, but wakes up, energy is absolutely fine. Reversal anaxomic and anaxomic mag carb will feel very tired on waking after a lack of sleep, but not with carcinosin. Even if they sleep for two hours, the next morning they are absolutely refreshed and ready for the day's onslaught. And lastly, we come to N. Remember for carcinosin, there is notable alteration of symptoms. There is notable alternation of symptoms. So you can find them to be fastidious and then to be untidy. They have a craving, F-E-M-S, fat, meat, fruit, eggs, milk, salt. So they may have a craving for these things, but may have an aversion to these things as well. But also remember another mnemonic for carcinosin, LOSS, love of travel. They love traveling like tuberculinum. They can be very obstinate also like tuberculinum. 
they can be sympathetic like phosphorus a lot of empathy a lot of compassion like phosphorus but they can be very sensitive to music rhythm and thunder like sepia like phosphorus as well sensitive to music to rhythm thunderstorm like phosphorus as well so these are some of the important physical areas where you can think of carcinosin i hope you'll be able to employ carcinosin in your practice based on the emotional picture i've shared few years back based on the physical essence and the family history and the past history and the disappointment of carcinosin so learn from your mistakes but make sure they are the stepping stones for your success thank you very much long live honeyman long live hopiopathy